Uh, so one of the things I love about Ivy, which you heard from their introduction, is Vice President of Design at Google and Masters in Energy Healing, or <laughs> Energy Work. <laughs> I was like, that's a perfect Wisdom 2.0 um, uh, bio. <laughs> um, so welcome, Ivy. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. I've known you f as friends for quite a while, and I think this is your first time to, to be present with us. And I know you've uh, been with us also in the morning listening to Byron Katie and some of the other talks. So I love to expand on that, but also really make it practical, some of these pieces, and hear how you um, bring this into your work, various different awareness uh, orientations. But before we do that, I thought it might be nice just to hear um, how you see what you do. Uh, we heard your short bio, but in your world or in your definition, um, how do you see your role at Google? So it's interesting, I never say I'm a leader. I always say I'm an orchestra conductor because I do mm -hmm. believe I'm the orchestra conductor with a large group of talented people whose job has been recently to um, define the design language. You know, when you hold Google in your hands, mm -hmm. which is a, kind of a new category for Google, mm -hmm. what does it um, feel like, look like, and what's the interaction like? Mm -hmm. um, but my real job, I believe, underneath the surface mm -hmm. is to bring uh, the feminine mm. to this technology company mm -hmm. and help model what that might look like. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's either or, I think it's and mm -hmm. both. Mm -hmm. And I think the world, ultimately, we need to be fully integrated, male and female, mm -hmm. in one body. So when mm -hmm. I say that, it's not about the body we're in, but it's about the principles. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I feel very grateful to be there right now, um, mm -hmm. really modeling what art and science looks like mm -hmm. and intuition and analysis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And so um, how, does that, uh, how does that show up? Because <laughs> I, I definitely think there is, if we look at the tech community, it's one, it's been very male. It's been very engineering centric. It's been like, um, let's just get it to work. You know, how it looks and how it feels hasn't been a part of, uh, at least traditionally, how uh, the tech world has oriented. Um, so I'm curious, like, how you see this evolving, or do you see it evolving, and why is that element, um, why is that element so important? Why do we need people like yourself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll give you one example, and I think Danielle, who is part of my group, will mm -hmm. be speaking later mm -hmm. this afternoon, um, created something called the Empathy Lab, which was mm -hmm. really came out of us asking questions mm -hmm. that weren't necessarily asked before mm -hmm. um, in terms of, you know, what does it look like um, to have an empathetic mindset mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. you're programming things mm -hmm. and um, creating interactions. Mm -hmm. And so what's been terrific is it's been two or three years where she's mm -hmm. been at it, but now the company is absolutely embracing, you know, her talks mm -hmm. and uh, you know, she's, we're really living the questions. It's asking mm -hmm. a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And then taking the time to develop the hypotheses and mm -hmm. um, the answers. So that's one way, <coughs> sorry, another way is really understanding um, and creating products that are, have a sense of beauty and, and mm -hmm. play with the senses. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think in the beginning, there was a lot of technology for technology's sake. Mm -hmm. And I think what mm -hmm. the balance looks like is, mm -hmm. you know, the creativity around the form married with the intelligence mm -hmm. of the software inside. Mm -hmm. So it took a while for my team to just heads down, mm -hmm. you know, um, model what that looks like, mm -hmm. what aesthetics and mm -hmm. beauty might look like. I do think we're spending so much time on flat screens mm -hmm. that as humans, we're craving um, more dimension and tactility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so being really conscious of that as mm -hmm. we created the design language with our materials, colors, and forms. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I think it's a true collaboration among my team, mm -hmm. which is very diverse. And so that's why I say about making magic together yeah, yeah. is having a lot of dialogues of what does that look like, yeah. why, asking a lot of questions, 
but a lot of it is coming from um, a place of intuition mm -hmm. mixed with some mm -hmm. science. Mm -hmm. But I think we've modeled a lot more intuition. You know, when, yeah. when sometimes when um, someone would ask us, well, why? Why that shape or why that uh -huh. color? Uh, you know, I have no problem saying because it feels right. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I think um, bringing that sense of feeling mm -hmm. to the table as well mm -hmm. and intuition. And, you know, things, it's like the paradox. Um, I think sometimes you do your best work when you're pushed against the opposite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think my team and I are proud of what we've done together. Um, and glad that we had the opposite to push against because mm -hmm. it's not either or, it's and. And what would you say to um, women and maybe some men who are in workplaces where that feminine isn't actually so accepted? Um, and my guess is you've been also in work environments in your career where the feminine aspect wasn't so welcome that you would actually get criticized for, it uh, feels right, like, no, give me data or like yeah. show me. Um, and you seem to manage in a really beautiful way to bring it in in a way that doesn't feel, like, like either or or against. And I'm wondering, has that been a hard learning process? Have you learned things along the way that makes that an easier road? Yeah, I think one of the ways I've learned is through having empathy for the other mm -hmm. um, and seeing through their eyes. You know, the mm -hmm. world, we're all a product of our experience base. Right. So if you have someone that's only been focused on working a certain way, uh -huh. often if I would be to get to get frustrated, uh -huh. I put myself in there, uh -huh. see myself through their eyes. Yeah. Um, and there's some techniques I've used, and actually I've been using, along with a woman named Jacqueline Sussman, with eidetic imagery, where you actually can close your eyes and um, picture yourself being in dialogue uh -huh. with the other person, uh -huh. and then literally picture yourself looking through their eyes back at you and see what they see to learn their, you know, how that other perspective Now this is virtual reality or this is just them. imagination? No, this, is in our, this is in our imagination. Okay. Um, so I think you, um, that's the first place that I go uh -huh. to if I don't understand something. So rather than why are they so uptight and they're always so uptight, shifting that to let me help me understand and see the world from their eyes. Right, so that I could come from acknowledging a, from a place of acknowledging um, why they feel the way they feel, mm -hmm. but also bringing another perspective mm -hmm. to the table mm -hmm. as opposed to fighting against it. It's trying to have a, a dialogue and understanding mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the things that I think sometimes people hear is some of the talks, but they're like, well, does this really apply in work? You know, like, like how do I actually apply some of these concepts of being aware of other or of seeing those things? So this eidetic imagery work is one clear example, but I've always, you know, for 30 years, I started on my own personal, 30 years ago, my mm -hmm. own personal journey. I was an art and design major and a psychology minor at school. So I think I was always interested in not just what we do, but how we do it. Mm -hmm. um, really started exploring Jungian psychology at mm -hmm. first, uh, did a lot of meditation that got me into sound and vibration and Qigong. Um, and then, and it used to be two separate mm -hmm. parallel lives, mm -hmm. kind of discovering yeah. the mysteries of life uh -huh. and doing my job. I think people can relate to that yeah. out here. <laughs> and then I got brave, I think at about 40 years old, and said, wait a minute, you know, I'm very grateful that I had succeeded in the corporate yeah. world. It was never, um, I was never one of those people like, I want to be a vice president or a senior right. vice president by the age of X. It right. just... I stayed very true to who I was yeah. and did what I thought was right. Yeah. Um, but I saw it as a great gift and I said, why has this happened? And I mm -hmm. realized, well, it's to have credibility, potentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and what I started to do is, you know, I was very careful to first prove myself mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so people understood the value that I bring mm -hmm. to their business mm -hmm. and then start to weave in um, and be a little more playful with some of the technologies mm -hmm of the sacred, as I call them, that mm -hmm. I've experienced, um, to just amplify the creativity. So mm -hmm. for example, at Mattel Toys, uh, it was a time when CEOs were going, you know, you, you, and you, you're a team. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, we're not. We're not even mm -hmm. connected. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and I would see 
sometimes brainstorming would absolutely go nowhere with five people in the room for mm -hmm. two hours, and yet sometimes there'd be another five people, and it would automatically, we'd get mm -hmm. to great places mm -hmm. and new ideas. And I realized that there is, um, you know, we use terminology, we're on the same wavelength, mm -hmm. And I said, I wonder if I could force everyone to be on the same wavelength. Uh -huh. So sure enough, I brought in one of my sound guys, and we found <laughs> the fundamental frequency where these 12 people resonated, wow. had it embedded in music octaves up and down. And in the studio, we would play that music. Wow. And when we were discussing new ideas, and sure enough, just like um, the concept of entrainment, where uh -huh. cuckoo clocks uh -huh. eventually start swinging the same way, people were getting coherent on the same wavelength, and we came up with some of our best ideas. Wow. I mean, I think having run design and innovation teams mm -hmm. makes it a little bit easier to put some of this into mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. um, but I do believe just the, my own work on myself, which I mm -hmm. think any good I won't, orchestra conductor <laughs> um, needs to first do that mm -hmm. you know, before they can Mm -hmm. find the gifts and talents of mm -hmm. others, which I believe is truly my mm -hmm. role, is um, to get to really deeply listen and get to learn who's on my team, mm -hmm. and then see what their unique gifts and talents are, mm -hmm. and create situations that optimize that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I think that, like most companies, they want to be creative. Everyone's like, oh yeah, let's be creative. But the art of creativity, or of actually coming up with something that's truly innovative, it's how do you see that process? Because it, it can't be forced or it can't be controlled, but yet it can be nurtured. Yeah, I think I what people um, often don't understand in companies, they think it's re-engineering the process mm -hmm. <laughs> and they'll pay consulting companies to come yeah. in and do that. And it's actually some of the softer stuff. It's, the, uh -huh. it's trust uh -huh. and freedom and it's creating the right conditions under which creativity can yeah foster and grow. Yeah, and so what it, sound seems to be a particular, sound and energy seem to be a particular resonance. What is it about that domain that, that just feeds you or that like... Uh, well, I played, I played the drums as a kid and I think uh -huh. I... Um, there was something about getting in rhythm with uh -huh. things uh -huh. and everything is energy. I mean, we're uh -huh. energy. Mm -hmm. vibrating at different levels. And yeah. so it started to make sense. I was always, um, and still am, a very curious person. So mm -hmm. I just ask questions and follow where the answers lead me. Mm -hmm. um, so after having studied Jungian psychology and kind of understanding maybe what's up here, mm -hmm. I wanted to understand, well, what's between us? Mm -hmm. um, and that led me to, uh, to vibration, sound, um, mm -hmm. energy, and really even something called biogeometry, which is uh, taught by an Egyptian architect around how certain shapes and forms uh, exu give off different energy. Mm -hmm. And he has mm -hmm. you do these exercises in building things and on paper where you can then, with a pendulum, feel just shifting an angle changes wow. the energy that that shape wow. gives off. Wow. So I mean, you know, I take all this in yeah. and I weave, um, use it when appropriate. Right. <laughs> it's not something that... Um, uh, Controls I, a complete process. Yeah, absolutely yeah. not. I think it's tools in your toolbox. Yeah. And I continue to, I think the more I understand about uh, the mysteries of life, yeah. um, the better off I am in my day to day. I also mm. think... Uh, you know, I've had a lot of responsibility throughout my career, worked mm -hmm. with many people, and people would often remark how calm I was, even mm -hmm. with all this level of responsibility. And I think part of that comes from all the work I've done on myself mm -hmm. uh, in understanding the relationship and what I'm, the job I'm really there to do. Right, because I'm sure in your job, uh, there's so much uh, tension and pressure to get it right, right? Particularly with hardware, because if, if, if it messes up, you, you can't just, it's not like a website, you can go and like re uh, reboot it. Um, and so I'm, I'm curious, like, how do you deal with that sense of responsibility and pressure and the conflicts that must come up with like, this looks like shit. No, this is the <laughs> best thing ever. And it's like billions of dollars potentially like fall on this product, success or failure. And um, my guess is there's a lot of self or a lot of tension that can easily come 
into the room around that. Yeah, well, when we, the team and I, we're creating, co-creating truly together. Um, well, first of all, I believe what helps protect some of those mistakes is diverse teams. Mm -hmm. Because, and I don't mean diverse just male and female, I mean diverse perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, because it's the way the universe was created. There's not the mm -hmm. same species, right? Mm -hmm. It takes, uh, to be creative, many different elements. Put so do you together. mean like people who, who have a traditional education, people who don't have a traditional education, people, people who, who have no education, poor, at, no education, yeah. yeah okay. and, and people who have had different life experiences and mm -hmm. come at even design from different places. Mm -hmm. And then it's really talking through, um, you know, one of us may have an intuition mm -hmm. <clears throat> about something, uh, and then there'll be a different perspective, mm -hmm. and we'll have dialogue back and forth, and really always talk about why someone feels one way mm -hmm. versus the other. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, you know, you have to come to a conclusion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and take responsibility mm -hmm. and um, remember why you made those decisions, mm -hmm. and that's all you can hold yourself accountable mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a practice of um, making sure that everyone is heard. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I'm accountable for right, right. Um, what we put out there. Right. But if you put it out there without people at least feeling like they haven't, have been heard and seen and acknowledged and their point is discussed, my guess is the team, even if they don't go with, or you don't go yeah. with their idea, <laughs> it's a whole different energy than versus like, no, that's not the right idea. We're going this way. Yeah, oh, and I absolutely believe that the spirit in which something is designed is transmitted to the people receiving it. Wow, okay. So I think that um, you're exactly right. That energy of the way mm -hmm. in which it was created, I believe, will be subtly felt. So it's Can you say more about that? So it's like if I have a, a phone or a, a device, um, the, the, the energetics or the intention or the level of, of uh, intentionality behind that would at some level be felt. I believe that. I've done, I've done experiments in companies, you know, if you have, um, <clears throat> we were even doing uh, at Mattel Toys, Toys for Children, mm -hmm. and we would um, design them together in mm -hmm. one setting, in mm -hmm. one way. We would, um, I, I created this thing called Project Platypus, which was a different way of working, mm -hmm. and it was a 12-week program where people were um, treated differently, found, mm -hmm. you know, their jobs were based on their gifts and talents. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's funny, but the word got out that, because um, women who were in the program were getting pregnant and the word got out like, is <laughs> Ivy holding orgies over there? And that was not the case at all. What we found <laughs> is that these women who were happily married, who had been trying to conceive for years, under this way of working, um, they were actually getting pregnant because their hormones were flowing differently. Wow. I still get letters on wow. Facebook saying thank you for my daughter. <laughs> um, but my point being that in that, where we were creating in a different environment, mm -hmm. um, more connected, more mm -hmm. happy, more creative, so not I have only to say the those toys were more <laughs> successful. So I mean, I've come to now, there's no, this is my own intuition. Sure, 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 sure. Um, but not only would the product maybe look a little different, but the energetics that, that that product might be able to, somebody feels could be slightly yeah, different. I think it's all about, you know, it's the feeling yeah. of um, the conditions under which that was made. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think that gets transmitted. And, and you know, that is my job in service to others who work with me is to yeah. try and create an environment where they feel seen mm -hmm. and the work is great. Mm -hmm. And I believe those two things go together. Mm -hmm. So last question. Thank you. Okay. We had uh, a Tarana who kind of created Me Too um, uh, uh, last night and speaking and just speaking about kind of the healing that we're all going through as a society and a world. And I think there's this like um, blending of the masculine and feminine that we're also discovering both in companies and in society. And um, it feels like your work is is very involved in that, right? Like there's the masculine and the feminine, these really have to work together. Yeah. Um, and I'm wondering if you could say just a few, you, I know you've touched on it a little bit, but I wonder if you had some few kind of closing thoughts on 
on how you see us navigating that, um, both within a, a business company, but then potentially in society. If we were really going to invite the feminine and invite the feminine in a way that isn't against uh, the masculine, um, how you see that process? Well, I think it's embracing this idea that it's not either or. Our job mm -hmm. is to embody both mm -hmm. principles. Um, and that it's not about, you know, art or science. It's mm -hmm. about both. Mm -hmm. And I think in every place, whether it's politics, um, corporations, we have to make room for the feminine principles to be, to come alive in mm -hmm. those environments. Mm -hmm. I think that's some of the things within... Um, some of the young women I mentor is, I mean, the universe put women in, for example, the workforce because we just have a different perspective. We yeah, ask different questions. Right. And, but if those young women behave like the males they see yeah. because that's what they see modeled, right. um, then shame on us. I mean, yeah. because we have to be brave and um, ask those different questions yeah. and yeah. state those different opinions. So I think we all have to have our own role in this. Yeah. And um, it's funny, I keep, I said one day, I'm not a feminist and, and because I don't, that word feels mm -hmm. like, you know, you're siding one way yeah. or the other. I just believe that it's, we need the balance. Yeah. And um, because there's a reason that there's mm -hmm. both the male and female principles. And I think it's in our DNA from yeah. hunter gatherer days. Yeah. No judgment. One is not better or worse. I think yeah. I know for me to be successful, I sometimes feel like in any one day or meeting or mm -hmm. moment, I'm mm -hmm. using my masculine mm -hmm. tools versus mm -hmm. my feminine tools. Mm -hmm. So I just want for the planet, for the, you know, mm -hmm. um, for the world, for individuals, that we come to a place where both sides are embraced, both within us mm -hmm. and outside of us. Beautiful, and potentially where we can be. Better is right. We're actually better people and better leaders and better parents and better children. Better and everything. With that, <laughs> honoring the both of those. Yeah, we will yeah. be better, better together if we yeah. were all like that. Yeah. Thank Beautiful. you. Thank you. Thank you.